morning, Dallas First Christian Church, the Dallas community, and all who have joined us here on this beautiful Sunday morning for worship. We are here in this sanctuary uh, to come into, uh, into the presence of God. The reality is you are at home or wherever you are watching this at, and you are also in the presence of God wherever you may be. We may be separated by miles, but we are gathered together in the Spirit of God. So this morning, as we worship together, let us hear our opening scripture from the Psalms and I'll have our opening prayer as we continue to come into God's presence in worship. Hear these words from the psalmist. Psalm 89. I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. With my mouth, I will make your faithfulness known through all generations. I will declare that your love stands firm forever, that you have established your faithfulness in heaven itself. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and make your throne firm through all generations. The heavens praise your wonders, Lord, your faithfulness too in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies above can compare with the Lord? Who is like the Lord among the heavenly beings? In the council of the holy ones, God is greatly feared. He is more awesome than all who surround him. Who is like you, Lord God Almighty? You, Lord, are mighty, and your faithfulness surrounds you. As we continue to come into God's presence, let us pray together this morning. Gracious God, we thank you for all that you have given to us. We thank you for who you are, your mighty works that we have seen, your creation that surrounds us. Lord, we come this morning bringing you all of who we are, for you welcome us into your presence. Your grace and your love and mercy surround us. For there's nowhere we can go that is apart from you and apart from your love. And so, Lord, as we worship this morning, touch our hearts. Challenge us where we need to grow. We ask, Lord, that as we worship together, that you will be pleased, you be honored and glorified by our worship. And we ask all of this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. As we worship this morning, let us sing, Take Us to the River. Take us to the river. Take us there in unity to sing song of your salvation to win this generation for our king song of forgiveness for it is with grace that the river flows take us to the river in the city of our god take us to your throne room Give us ears to hear the cry of heaven, for that cry is mercy. Mercy to the fallen sons of man, for it is a triumph. Triumphed over judgment by the blood. Take us to the throne room in the city of our God. For the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon us. This is the year of the Lord. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon us. This is the year of the Lord. Take us to the mountain, lift us in the shadow of your hand, this your mighty angel, stands astride the ocean and the land, for in his head your mercy, showers on a dry and barren place, take us to the mountain in the city of our God. 
for the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon us. This is the year of the Lord. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon us. This is the year of the Lord. we come into God's presence, we are aware of God's love that surrounds us. Paul reminds us in Romans 8 that uh, nothing can separate us from God's love, and God's love is for all people. And There are really no outsiders uh, when we choose to accept and, and recognize God's presence around us. a refuge you have no borders when I was a stranger knocking at your door you took me in with no questions and no conditions when I was a sinner running from your grace you called me friend you called me friend there are no outsiders to your love. We are all welcome, there's grace enough. When I have wandered, Lord, cross is the open door. There are no outsiders, I'm not an outsider to your love. the harbor in every tempest when my soul was shipwrecked tossed upon the waves you calmed the storm you are the father there are no orphans every tribe and nation gathered in your arms sings with one voice sings with one voice there are no outsiders to your love. We are all welcome, there's grace enough. When I have wandered, Lord, cross is the open door. There are no outsiders, I'm not an outsider to your love. I was tired and I was poor, I was thrown upon your shore, I was homeless and afraid, till I heard you call my name, now I'm ransomed, I'm restored, resurrected, I am yours, I am loved, yes I belong, oh my soul has found its home. There are no outsiders to your love. We are all welcome, there's grace enough. When I have wandered, Lord, cross is the open door. There are no outsiders, I'm not an outsider. There are no outsiders. We are not outsiders to your love. You know, we may also t at times be in a place where we don't think God's grace can find us. Uh, bad things are happening. We're, we're fighting depression, uh, battling grief, wondering what's next. And we wonder where God's grace is. But God's grace finds us, even in the lowest places, in the good times, in the bad times, in the normal things of life, in the extraordinary things of life. God's grace is present.
there in the newborn Christ. It's there in the light of every sunrise. It's there in the shadows of this life, your great There on the mountain top, it's there in the everyday and the mundane, it's there in the sorrow and the dancing, your great grace, oh such grace, from creation to the cross. cross into eternity, your grace finds me, yes, your grace finds me, it's there on the wedding day, it's there in the weeping by the graveside, it's there in the very breath we breathe. Your great grace From creation to the cross From the cross into eternity Your grace finds me Yes, your grace finds me Same for the rich and poor same for the saint and for the sinner, not for this whole wide world, your great grace, oh such grace. From creation to the cross, from the cross into eternity, your grace finds me. Yes, your grace finds me. It's there in the darkest night of the soul. It's there in the sweetest songs of victory. Your grace finds me. Yes, your grace finds me. Your great grace, so oh, such grace. your praise. I'm breathing in your grace. Forever I'll be breathing in your grace. And I'm breathing out your praise. I'm breathing in your grace. Forever. From creation to the cross. From the cross into eternity. Your grace finds me. Yes, your grace finds me. The grace of God finds us wherever we are. The grace of God surrounds us in all of life's situations. As we remember God's grace this morning, let us pray. Let us lift before God the requests of our hearts, the requests of our families and our community, all those that you are aware of, uh, we just ask that you lift them up as we pray together this morning. Gracious God, thank you that your grace surrounds us in all situations, that your grace is always present with us. Lord, help us to be aware of your grace. Open our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our very souls to be aware of that grace around us. Lord, we do lift before you those who are in need this morning, those who are struggling with health issues, battling cancer, those who are, are going through grief and loss, Lord, those who are in the hospital, those who need healing 
not only of body, but of heart and soul this morning. We hold them all before you. We thank you, Lord, that we can come and lift them up, that you are the ultimate healer. Lord, we pray for the families in our community. We pray, Lord, that you will uh, just hold them at this time as the children, the kids, the students start uh, their official summer vacation. Uh, we pray, Lord, that you will continue to provide for their needs. Uh, use the churches here in Dallas to help with that. Uh, we give you thanks for the teachers and all, the, all those who worked with the kids, especially during this transition time. Uh, we just pray, Lord, that you will give them rest and you will give them a chance of renewal. Uh, Lord, we pray for those families who are in need, uh, that you will provide for them, whether it's jobs or finances or food, uh, housing, whatever it might be, Lord. And we also pray that you will bring reconciliation where there needs to be reconciliation. Lord, we pray for our community. Lord, as we go into the summer here in Dallas, uh, we just ask, Lord, that you will draw us together in unity. That as the churches pray together, as we work together, that you will take some time uh, to use us in mighty ways to change lives and to bring healing. We pray for our country, Lord, in the same way that you will use churches and people of faith across this country to touch lives and, and bring unity. You said in your, your word that as, as we, as believers pray, as your children pray, that you will bring healing to the land. And so, Lord, we pray for that healing. We pray that you will bring us together. We pray for our leadership. We pray for unity. We pray for peace. We pray for reconciliation. Lord, it's not just the requests that we lift up but it's the blessings as well. The blessings of new life. The blessings of new opportunities. The blessings of renewal and rest. We hold them before you, knowing that it is in your hands that all of these rest. The good and the bad, the struggles and the victories. Everything that we are and everything that we carry with us rests in your hands. So Lord, we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning we will be continuing in the book of Romans, chapter 6, and we'll be beginning at verse 12. And this is going to be a long passage, a fair warning, and there's a lot here to unpack. But this morning I, I will be lifting out just one or two, two core parts of this text for us that will hopefully be an encouragement to you and to your walk and will draw you close to Christ this morning. Hear these words, follow along from Romans chapter 6, verses 12 through 23. Paul writes, Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body, so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and offer every part of yourselves to Him as an instrument of righteousness, for sin shall no longer be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey? Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from sin and become slaves to righteousness. I am using an example from everyday life because of your human limitations. Just as you used to offer yourselves as slaves to impurity and ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness, leading to holiness. When you are slaves to sin, you are free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. 
For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. There is a lot in this text. There's a lot of, of stuff that Paul is, is trying to talk about and communicate here in this chapter and how important it is for us to, to try to understand what it is. And, and the reality is there's, there's so much here in this text this morning that uh, we won't be covering. Like I said, I want to pull out uh, a couple things that will help us uh, ho hopefully draw close to God and live a more righteous life as we move forward. First of all, I just want to address kind of Paul's language, yeah, his, his language of slavery, and that's a, a tough thing for us maybe to be hearing uh, this, this, during this time, uh, this morning. Uh, I want us just to be aware that Paul's using this as, as an example, using this as an illustration. Uh, there, there's just so much here that, about who we obey, and that's really what, what it is that Paul's talking about. Who are we obeying? Who is our... Who are we following? Who are we obeying? Who is our master? Who is our king, Lord? You know, there's a variety of words you can put in there, as far as as you know who we are following. And Paul basically says, you know, we have we really have two choices. We really have two choices. We can either obey our sinfulness, our sinful nature, those things that uh, that led us into death, those things that we are now ashamed of, those things we did before we came to Jesus before we had faith, before we recognized that Jesus is, is the, the way. And let me, let me tell you, if, if you don't believe this morning and you're here, you just happen to come across us or decide to join us in worship, I, I really believe that Jesus is the way. And that is through, it is through Christ that we have reconciliation with God. We're not perfect, but we're on the journey. Which is the other side of what Paul says. Paul says, first of all, you know, we used to be in sin. We used to do these things that, that led to death. We were apart from God. When we've come to Christ, when we've made that confession of faith, when we, when we believe in our hearts, it is then that we are to, to change, to be different, to call upon God's power and God's grace, to be different people in the world today, to do things and live lives of righteousness, Things that not only glorify God, but lead to life for us, for the world around us. For what we believe in our hearts has to be lived out in our lives, in our words, in our actions. Life, the eternal life that Paul talks about, is not just the eternal life after death, but it begins now and today and continues tomorrow. And going forward so when we talk about life in christ even eternal life with god we're talking about even life here on earth so here's my question for us this morning on this journey of faith that we're on each of us is in a different place are you allowing god to transform your life are you allowing god to be uh, your lord and master in all areas of your life i know i try to try to each day think about that look at that look at areas of my life that may need to be uh, dealt with by God have God's grace poured upon them you know no one's ever going to get it all right even Paul says I have not yet attained it but I keep pressing forward I keep pressing on to take hold of that prize you know we keep looking forward we keep moving forward trying to do better and when we fall, when we fail, we confess those sins. And, and it's as if God reaches down and lifts us up. He says, hey, Darren, get up. Let's try this again. Remember that grace that we live in, that we're surrounded by. That grace not only lifts us up when we fall, but it empowers us as well to, to live out all our lives. You know, when we're struggling with a decision or an action, when we're struggling to find the right words or have the right attitude, it's a matter of saying, God, I want to live in your grace and by your power. I want to do the things that you have called me to do. And by your grace, God, I, I, I will do those things. When we live in God's grace, it's not only about forgiveness, it's also about living 
been power, empowered by that grace. And so this morning I want to challenge you. Take a look at your life. Take a look at the things that are going on, not only around you, but within you. What is it that you need to this morning? Say, God, you know, I, I confess these to you. I fail, I've fallen. Where do you need to hear and experience God's grace in your life? Not only to lift you up when you fall, but to empower you to live today. To live a righteous, God, godly life today. I think that, that's the core of what Paul's saying here in this, this part of chapter 6. You know, we used to live a life of sin, uh, things we were ashamed of, or things that went against God's law, God's calling for us. And by when I say God's law, I'm not necessarily talking just about the Ten Commandments, but what God has placed upon our hearts. Even those, those two commandments, Jesus says, love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. Where have we failed to love those around us? And we say, God, I want to do better. I want to be the, the woman. I want to be the man. I want to be the person the God, God that you want me to be. So we ask God, where do I need to do better? Where do you need to empower me? For, forgive me. And guide me in what I need to do. Paul's saying we, live, we can live in, in one of two ways. We live by sin, which leads to death. Or we live by God's grace and power, which leads to life. Life here and now. Life in our world today. And yes, then life everlasting in the next life. So this morning as we uh, prepare our hearts and our minds for communion, I want us to remember and to take some time, not only to think about the act of uh, on the cross, the sacrifice that Jesus went through for us on that on that cross uh, and that that um, terrible event, but also the the new life that Christ offers us. It's called being born again, a new creation. You know, a lot of different words and phrases for it. But we have forgiveness. We have grace through Christ, and we have a way to live a new life. So this morning, I encourage you to, to uh, take your communion elements as we prepare our hearts for communion. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks for it, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is given for you. Whenever you eat it, remember me. He also took a cup from the table and he blessed it and he said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink of it, remember me. Would you pray with me this morning? Gracious God, we thank you for your presence in this place, presence wherever we are. Lord, we remember your sacrifice we remember what you have given to us through the gift of Jesus Christ. We remember what Jesus has done for us on the cross. And we remember the new life that we have uh, through him. Lord, be with us as we uh, focus on you this morning. As we take these elements, as we reflect on not only their meaning, but what you have called us to do and be. And Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. loves me, the Bible tells me so. 
This morning, as we close our time together, I want us to sing the song, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. Uh, because it is through God's grace that we are set free from our sin, to live lives of righteousness uh, in God's presence and in the world today. Uh, as we sing this morning, I want you to not only receive God's grace, that amazing grace that covers our sin, but be empowered by that grace to live each day as people of God, righteous lives. ransom me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace the Lord has promised good to me his word my hope secure set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace the earth shall soon dissolve like snow Son, forbear to shine. But God, who called me here below, will be forever mine. Will be forever mine. You are forever. go this morning in peace surrounded by God's grace as God lifts you up in all that we do. Amen. Was lost, but now.